so... And it's so nice and lucky that we have video cameras in this century, this millennium, that I happen to be fortunate enough to be alive in. Sometimes I don't feel very fortunate. I feel like I would be better off uh, in the time zone, times when if I were... <laughs> and I think I have... I'm sorry, this is such a tangential from what we were just talking about, but... Um, for a long time, I've had this really big connection with, like, uh, philosophers in the Western tradition. And I feel like they've wafted my soul to somewhere that I can't even tell you. Um, I mean, their writings have been basically the basis for uh, my launching into understanding this world and my place in it. And who I am and what I am. And I just have such a connection um, to... You know, the last thousand years of thinkers writing and expressing their notions and their ideas and um, really examining what it is about this universe. And I think a lot of it I haven't really been able to grasp, but there's been some of it, like in particular Locke, um, that has really been instrumental to Developing, me developing. Um, but irrationality and reason, more specifically, um, which uh, I was without for a while, and uh, something that still kind of hang o hangs over me. I think it doesn't hang over me. It's more of like a. I don't know. It's like a memento mori in a painting by you know, Dutch painters. It's this skull sitting over there. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna die. It's like that, but less like a uplifting message. Like more or less of a, uh, you know, a message of spirituality. More of something that, well, I guess it's a spiritual message. I just don't know how to decode it. It's just, it's, it's, it's particularly, um, you know, big right now. And I, I've, I've put it together, kind of, and I think I, I, mean, I have some idea of what... I, I Frankly, I know what was going on with me. Um, it's just hard to string it together into something that's easily explainable, I think. Maybe if I tried, I could. But let me get back to my point, which was that it's so nice that um, we have this stuff. We have computers and stuff. Because, man, it's so difficult to write this stuff. You know, you start writing and it's like, you have so many more words to say. And, like, it takes, I don't know, a lot of concentration to meander like this until you find a real um, line of you know, uh, stuff that, that actually, like, you know, that you can... Um, I don't know, it's not like this is necessarily anything that's that I would... If I were to write this transcript out, put it in a book, or I would send to Oprah or something. I mean, who knows? But, um, the point is, is that it's nice to have such a thing where you can just speak and it can be recorded and um, you can look back on it and have that record of exactly what was happening. Um, you know, it's a very direct line of communication and happy that we've developed such a technology that we can capture sound waves using such simple te techniques that um, have exploded into something um, that's indispensable and um, that is built upon other complex techniques built on simple principles and um, I'm just so happy to be here I guess. Um, so, I think what I was talking about in the last video was a little bit about my fam, right, my family, my dad's side, my mom, my dad, or sorry, my dad and his background, my grandma and her background, and, you know, this, um, her background of yoga 
I'm sorry, not just not just yoga, but um, SRF, which is so much to do with kar uh, karma yoga. Sorry, not karma yoga. Um, kriya yoga, and with meditation, um, and breathing, and her practice with Reiki. She's been a in kind of chiropractic practice for a long, a long time. She was a social worker at one point, a headhunter at one point. She didn't like that. She said that it was like selling people into slavery. And she really couldn't, her heart wasn't, she couldn't, uh, there was no way that that was going to be something that she could sleep at night with. Or not even just sleep at night, but, um, you know, that's a cool, I mean, that's a idiom. I guess it's appropriate in this instance, but it doesn't really necessarily communicate uh, the sentiment that she communicated to me. But, <sighs> I um I don't know. She uh she was so my grandmother and my father um kind of so a fractured household spiritually. So my grand my mother it, she is um, Christian and Protestant. So I grew up in the church and when I was a kid my mom and my dad would have arguments that I don't really remember recall. It's vaguely I do about religion about, um, you know, going to church, and I imagine she was, he wasn't going to church with her, and, you know, and these, you know, I talk about unevenly yoked couples, where one couple, one individual is going towards one spiritual direction, and another couple is one individual is going towards a different spiritual direction, and how this doesn't necessarily work, um, you know, my dad's in this inclusive, but still strict, still devoutly um, Muslim, and then he comes into Christianity, but he still doesn't necessarily love the church home that we had at New Life Fellowship, and um, he didn't really attend church very often, and, you know, people would be like, where's your husband? And mom would be like, I don't know, you know, and it would be this whole thing that, you know, on her, because a lot of it was, you know, it's community, but there's so much face, I guess, and who's who, and, and I don't know, I, I never really got into it, because... I just don't care much for church society, um, especially that church. I don't think it's all churches, but necessarily some churches definitely have. Um, I mean, churches definitely have their own, I think, society that they kind of correct and um, that emerges within uh, the church environment, depending on the institution, depending on the values, depending on you know a lot of things, to do, even down to the design and architecture of the place that they're and um, maybe I don't. Know, I'm, I still have it's yeah, still yet to see how much um, something like architectural space um, affects uh, the way that um, human interactions can can unfold. Um, because hey, you can repurpose repurpose. See that that's the key word here. Repurpose any space. If the space is unfit for a certain sort of. Uh, interaction, then it would be very difficult. Like if you were to use a Victorian house, uh, or like a like a Gothic with a Gothic decor, um, in order to have church meetings, it might take on a very sinister tone, and you might find that it's very difficult to carry on uh, seeing you know, hymns and praises uh, while this these deep red crimson chairs are staring at you, and you have maybe a gargoyle or, or two and like uh, black velvet. Um, curtains, etc. So, and you know, maybe there's a green color on the walls. And I'm sure that you might start to feel kind of odd, and like this, this doesn't really fit. Um, so, yeah, um, so we, we, we didn't really end up going to church very often. But I don't go to church now, I went to church all the time. And when I was a kid, they wanted to make me a prayer warrior. I remember every one memory of going, being in, in church, and they had this, um, moment where we, you, they, they took, I think we were like doing prayer intercession, you know, intercess, intercessor, intercessory prayer for people and for the world. It might, be, might have been a fast. I don't know the circumstances. It wasn't a Sunday. It was like a Wednesday night or something. And we went out and, I, and we were at church and they asked if anyone, I don't know if they asked if anyone to come up or like you know, asked like children. I don't remember if I was goaded or you know, pushed to go forward or if I did it over my own free will to go forward to the altar and 
to start praying, but I did. And I started praying, and then I started going on and on and on. I remember praying about Elvis. Uh, I still am curious about what my <laughs> the connection with Elvis is. I don't know that I was listening to a lot of Elvis when I was a kid, but somehow I prayed for his soul, and I prayed for a lot of different stuff. It was probably just a cute kid prayer. Um, I think whenever I really got into the spirit of prayer and like just channeling, I guess, like whatever that prayerful energy, prayerful spirit is, and started spirit uh, praying, like we would have circles of intercessory prayer because that was really big when I was a kid in the church. Now, it didn't really, it didn't really um, continue to be that. Uh, we, the spirit, mystical, spiritual aspect of church kind of died out as I got older, I think. But when I was a kid, we definitely had people with shawls, you know, like these, like, not shawls, but like these rip, ribbons? I don't know how you would call them, like these really big, like, scarf-type things that would have, I think they had Hebrew all over them, and they were, like, gigantic, and they wanted to give me one, because they were like, you're a prayer warrior, and they wanted me to come and, like, pray with all the, like, the, like, 50-year-olds about, like, the world issues and stuff, and I don't remember if, uh, why I didn't, I think as something to do with my parents, I don't know, but, um, it's just funny stuff, so, then, <laughs> Anyway, so, fractured. So, my mom and my dad, yeah. So, they had a lot of issues about uh, prayer. I'm sorry, about church, about attending church, about spirituality. Um, and they never really, I don't think they really had in-depth conversations about their beliefs or anything. So my, my mom's very dogmatic and uh, very, you know, um, attached to those beliefs. That, you know, the Protestant Christian beliefs. I'm talking quite like because I'm in house. But, um, and, uh... I, I don't know, this is, and I guess, you know, a person gets that way, especially growing up um, with that as your main belief system, and I think she was a convert. Um, at one point, she had a very uh, significant experience, I believe, where she felt led to give her life to Christ, and I think that um, it happened when they first got, my parents first got married or something like that. Um, I, actually, I don't remember if she felt led or if it was just this thing that she did. Um, because itself seemed right. I don't remember exactly why she came to Jesus, but she did. And um, that kind of became like a backbone. I think she found community and friendship there, like in the choir. Um, she was a soprano, very beautiful voice. She would sing gorgeously. Um, and she would stand there and you know, tell your mom, you know. But it came, it came stressful eventually. It's like, oh, I gotta get church because mom has to go to choir. I have to wake up at like, Six o'clock in the morning, go to church. Oh my god, you know, it's like I can't enjoy this. But, um, so yeah, why do they make why do they make things anything so early in the morning? Like, except for like meditation and like, you know, like very quiet spiritual activities, <laughs> like running, <laughs> you know, like very solitary activities should be done in the morning, not meeting people and like, you know, and saying hello and like looking at things and like doing things and like walking around and jumping and no that stuff that stuff that stuff is like not but oh man the pews were so hard and we just sit there for hours and listen to the preacher and sometimes it'd be fun and animated and you know most of the times you're just bored because they're talking about the same stuff every Sunday over you hear the same themes I can't even tell you what they were but you know about money about David, you know, like, this, the same biblical figures, you know, you, you turn turn to this chapter in your Bible, blah, 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 you go to the chapter in your Bible, and you read a little bit about something, you know, with all the, all the things, and it's a big deal to not have your Bible, you have to have your Bible, or else the people in church are going to look at you, and say, where's your Bible, or like, you know, there's this whole, like, there's this whole, like, I don't know, it's just very, it was, an, uh, but, um, you know, you feel, you feel, judged like to some degree you know i don't not necessarily judge but it's just uncomfortable it's not like i don't like a family it's like this like it's like rules and etiquette to it that just isn't like who wants to follow that long but um i think it's all it's not serious but yeah, so, 
you know, and people would be running around and stuff. And, like, that that became, like, it was, like, in the middle of my church-going experience, I think, when I started taking out to, like, people like, running around screaming and doing all sorts of stuff. And we had plays at church. We had plays about, like, the devil. And, like, we had, like, not the devil specifically, but where the devil featured in, like, a car crash. And, like, oh, my God, it was so dramatic. And I used to be in these plays, too. And, like, I was baby Jesus when I was a little baby. And, um... I think that was the only play I was in, but no, I think I was in another play, but yeah, my sister was in flags. She was a she was a flag waver, so she would go to practice on Wednesday nights, and she would just go, um, and you know it was kind of fun watching them do their flags and stuff, and I had crushes on the little girls at church, Krista, and other among others, but you know we had. Bible study and stuff, and um, we would basically go there and do homework. Um, not really many of the kids liked Bible study. I was, my mom's boyfriend right now, he is, he, he's like, he, I guess he was a Bible school teacher when I was a kid, and he was like, I never liked you because you would read the Bible, we would have class, and you'd answer questions, you'd actually know stuff. And I was like, this kid knows more than me. Like, what the heck? I hate this kid. And I was like, oh. <laughs> And I, you know, I realized that, like, I did, like, I tried to, like, study the Bible a little bit. Like, I would read it. I wanted to read, like, the whole thing, and I would read parts of it. It was very dense. Um, you know, I didn't, obviously didn't get a lot of it. Um, but I would read Revelation a lot, because I was really in, like, I would really, like, I don't know, like, I guess maybe the imagery really struck me, and, like, the end times. Maybe it was a question that I had about, like, what happens, like, at the end. I don't know. I don't really know what was in my mind as a kid. Uh, about this kind of thing, but, um, so, and, um, yeah, I read the Bible a lot, and my friend, my, yeah, like, other kids at the church were, like, not really into it so much, and, like, I knew, like, the biblical stories, like, David, and, I don't know, King Solomon, and, I don't know, Elijah, and Jacob, and Joseph, and, like, whenever we watch, like, biblical movies like I was super into it my mom bought like VeggieTales films and like I would be like oh man this is so cool like I was really scared of the shades the tickle shades in Esther I was like oh my god these guys are terrifying they would come in with their feathers and I was like oh my god and I, I would just I don't know probably run away or something I don't remember um just you know just these are very but um face memories but my sister and I had so much fun we lost the fib Larry Boy, who used to watch Larry Boy all the time. Larry Boy! And, um, you know, the asparagus and the little carrot. Boy? Girl? I don't remember. I don't know. It seems very androgynous. I think it was a girl. And there was, um... Is there broccoli? Hmm. Um... But yeah, those were really fun to me. I really enjoyed those stories. And I really enjoyed, um, the Land of Milk and Honey. The trumpets, Jericho, and destroying like the wall fall, falling, and you know David and Goliath, and, like fathoming like, oh my God, like what do you mean this little tiny dude shot this guy in the head? And it was just fun. Like it was, there were just it wasn't anything serious. I don't think. I don't necessarily have to think I took it as like history. I didn't take it as like this actually happened. You know, Nebuchadnezzar, and it just seemed fantastical, I guess, like to some degree, like that. That you know, two boys would go, that that three boys would be put into a furnace and then like pulled out. And I think Reggie Tales probably had a, like a really good help. You know, was really good with helping with that because then they had vegetables doing these things. So you're like, yeah, this isn't real. <laughs> this is just like, this is a cartoon. Like the Bible is a cartoon. <laughs> um, and. You know, so, but I was really invested in it, and, like, a lot of that, like, the moral ideas, the ethics of Christianity stuck with me, um, and those kind of teachings. <sighs> okay, I'm going to stop this and keep